Welcome! This video explains the answer to question 6 of my second quiz on global warming, which concerns whether there is or is not proof of anthropogenic global warming theory. Let's take a look at what the question was. Question 6. True or false? There is no proof of the anthropogenic global warming theory. But who will judge the issue? The public? Politicians? The United Nations? No, none of these. Nobody will ever be able to prove it. So the answer to our question is true. But why? Because we have no evidence to support man-made global warming? No, there's plenty of evidence. The answer is because you cannot prove a scientific theory, only disprove it. The problem lies in the so-called scientific method. So let's take a look at that and see why we can't prove anthropogenic global warming. But let's use another theory as an example. How about gravity? Let's pretend you are Isaac Newton and you see an apple fall from a tree. From that observation you get an idea, called a hypothesis in science. Based on your own first law of motion, inertia, you postulate that there is a force acting on the apple pulling it towards the earth, and by your third law that the apple itself is pulling on the earth too. You call the phenomenon gravity. You then say, if my idea is right, then it will have the following consequences. So you make a series of predictions that can be tested based on your new hypothesis, such as predicting the paths of the planets around the sun. Then you devise experiments to test these predictions, say by measuring the positions of the planets, or by dropping lots of other things like a lot more apples, or water droplets, or cats, whatever. If your experiment fails, you have to go back to your original hypothesis and adjust it. Or if the failure shows up a fatal flaw in your idea, then you will have to abandon it. Of course, a successful experiment means that you're on the right track. So you go back and run another test on a different prediction, and so on, until your idea fails. But if it passes all the tests, then you end up with a viable scientific theory. So in science, unlike in normal usage, a theory is much more than just a notion. It has to have substantial evidence backing it. If others verify your result, and there are no other viable theories around, your theory might be considered to become a physical law. If the Nobel Prize had existed in Newton's time, he probably would have won several for physics alone, plus a few for mathematics and economics just for show. For 200 years, Newton's law of gravitation stood unchallenged, but there was a tiny problem. No matter how they tried, it could not be used to explain Mercury's orbit. Eventually, a guy named Einstein came along and applied something called relativity to the problem, and it all fell into place. And he did get the Nobel Prize. Let's put the scientific method all together in one diagram. Sorry, it looks a little complicated. The one thing to note here is there's no escape clause. The word proof does not appear. Or another concept may come along that can explain the falling apple in another way, or perhaps even better. So the law of gravity is not proven. Does that mean it does not work? Well, let's make sure. Well, those examples certainly seem to show that gravity is just fine. Let me know if your granny spontaneously floats off into space and will ask Albert for his medal back. But there is a lot of evidence that gravity does work. But there's also a lot of evidence that for global warming. Changes in planting zones, the increase in the percentage of large hurricanes, droughts in some places, the number of high temperature records being double that of the number of low temperature records set. More wildfires. Disappearing glaciers. The intensification of energy in the oceans. Effects on farming. Not to mention direct thermometer reading, floods, 
plus lots of other things. But how do we know humans are causing it? We can show that greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane and water vapour trap heat. For example, if we place an infrared camera at one end of a closed tube and a lighted candle at the other, we initially see a bright flame. However, as we start to introduce some carbon dioxide into the tube, that flame all but disappears. The more gas we put into the tube, the more the flame dims. That shows that carbon dioxide is absorbing the infrared light from the candle, which is another way of saying the heat from the candle. Equally, we can show that carbon dioxide has increased rapidly over the last 200 years to a level that has not been seen since reptiles ruled the Earth many millions of years ago. So where does the carbon dioxide come from? We can show that it comes from the burning of fossil fuels. But how do we know that? There are three independent measurements. First we know how much carbon dioxide we produce each year and it corresponds to the annual increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Secondly, fossil fuels have a different carbon isotope mix than other sources and the ratios are changing in the atmosphere in the way we would expect from fossil fuel burning. <clears throat> Thirdly, if it were from the burning of fossil fuels, we'd expect the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere to decrease by the same amount that carbon dioxide increases, which is exactly what has happened. So we've left our communal fingerprints all over the cause of global warming. So recent global warming turns out to be very anthropogenic. So the next time you hear somebody demanding proof of anthropogenic global warming, then you will know that they are demanding the impossible. Most of them know this. So waiting for absolute proof before acting is futile, and it's just excuse for inaction. So the answer to our question is true, but irrelevant. If you like this video, I've done a series of them on global warming and a couple of other things on the sun. The links are listed in the description box below. Keep safe. Bye for now.